You excited to be here? Yes! We've made it back to Carefree. Because it's Ginger, gorgeous. Ginger is going to the dealer to see what's going on with the axle or the bearings, and we have some other warranty work that we're happy to share with you. Everybody's gotta go to the doctor once in a while. So we mentioned in the last episode that we're going, we're between seasons, where we just got back from Alaska, and we're before Secret Season 6, and we wanted to provide some videos on some RV education. So this is the first one, RV Newbies Setup Checklist. We got some good stuff in store for you. We're gonna back into this site and we're gonna go through step by step everything you need to know in order to safely set up in a site. I love it. You ready? Yes. All right. Okay, right off the bat, quick backing up tool is I've noticed a lot of people do not go far enough forward to give themselves room to maneuver. And I know why, because no one really likes backing up, particularly into a site. And so you think, well, I'm gonna do it in as little space as possible. Go way further forward than you think you need so that you can get the right trajectory. Half of it is just getting the right angle. And if I wouldn't have gone as far forward as I did, I'd have to make some really sharp turns at the last minute, and that's when everything gets wonky, mm -hmm. okay? So, now we're gonna go through our step-by-step -step checklist, and the first thing to know, or remember, is you're not in a hurry. Can get especially stressful when you feel like everybody's watching you. And you might be right. <laughs> Everybody might be watching you because it's fun. <laughs> Provide some entertainment for them and actually take your time. And they'll go, hey, look, honey, they're taking their time. Nobody... It'll be amazing. No one will believe you. <laughs> <laughs> Nobody is yelling over there. <laughs> and I guess that leads us to disclaimer tip number two. Use your phones or some walkie-talkies mm -hmm. when backing up if possible. So good. Because then the communication is immediate and you don't have to raise your voice in mm -hmm. order to get your message across. Okay, so now we have three things to check before you chalk. Follow us over there. I like it. You like that? Yeah. I know, I just made that up. Wow. Okay, there are three things to check before you chalk. And the first one is to make sure you're close enough to your electrical and to make sure you're close enough to your water. Okay, the second thing to check is that there's no obstacles to your slides when the slides come out. So you wanna be close enough to make enough room but further enough away where you're not gonna hit any panel. And then the third thing is to make sure you are level left to right. Now, for leveling, I have really enjoyed the Level Mate Pro app. I was reluctant to get it at first because I didn't want anything that was like Bluetooth related, but I can pull up this app and I can look at it and I can immediately tell if I'm off by exactly how many inches. It'll tell me I'm off 0.25 on this side or one inch on this side. The advantage to this is that I can move around the site to get it level before I even get out. So we can go through a pull through and I can look down and I can drive through and I can stop right when it's level. So that's a big advantage. Paired with the Anderson blocks, it's about the best system that you can get for a travel trailer or fifth wheel. Okay, so we've measured, we make sure I've got enough room for the electrical water, I have no obstacles on the slide, and I've checked to make sure this site is level. But just to make sure, if you don't have the Level Mate Pro, let me show you this. I always keep a handy dandy four foot <coughs> level. <laughs> and you can put it right here to make sure you're level, or you can throw it in, whoop. You can throw it in right like that to make sure we're level. Now we've never had anything stolen at RV park ever in the three years that we've been full timing, except I used to have a yellow one of these. Good chance I left it behind. We'll never know. Let's go to the other side and let's chalk up the tires. So we've done the three things to check before you chalk. Now let's talk about chalking. When it comes to chalking, I double up. I use these X blocks, and I'll tell you why. And I also throw in these rubber ones. What you wanna stay away from 
And I've been carrying these crappy chocks for 11,219 miles to Alaska and back because I knew I was gonna do this video and I wanted to show you what not to buy. Do not buy these. Because if you put it under your tire, because it's chalked, and you forget about it and you drive off, you just drive right over them. And then it's just smushed plastic. Kinda not the purpose of a chalk. This is not that much more expensive and it's a far better chalk. So now that I've included this in the video, we're gonna throw those away. But the best thing is to use these paired with this. So let's talk about why. Okay, this is pretty handy sight because I have this curve right here. So I'm just gonna put that guy right there. The reason that I use these X blocks, they continue to be effective when you are on your Anderson blocks or you're on leveling blocks. And see, that's the issue is that, and I've seen this at RV parks all the time. Someone will be up on three leveling blocks and they're not chopped because when you're up on blocks, you can't, you know, this, this doesn't work anymore. And they don't have one of these. The issue with that is when your trailer is up on leveling blocks and it's up like this, and that rig were to slide off the back, the whole trailer would pivot forward. And if your tongue jack was up on a block that was too high and it wasn't stable, you would in inadvertently drop your entire trailer. It's critical to chalk your tires when you're up on leveling blocks, and this is the best way to do it. So once they're in here like this, you make it tight. You don't have to go crazy tight, just like that. Now I still put this right here because of the Hensley hitch when I pull forward or if you have a fifth wheel, you wanna make sure the rig stays back. So I throw this in extra, but I'll put this in on both sides. Okay, next step is to detach the trailer from the tow vehicle. And I will say at this point, there's gonna be a fair amount of pressure from the family to get those slides out and get the water hooked up. The proper way to do this process is to make sure your travel trailer or your fifth wheel is, or even a motorhome is completely level before you bring out the slides and to have electrical into the slides so they have full power before you operate them. That's the proper way. I'm not saying that we don't occasionally do it. If people wanna get in there and get started, that's why you're gonna have pressure. But this is, in my opinion, the proper steps if you take your time. You know what normally happens? What normally happens? You're usually crawling under to put the chocks in while I'm pushing <laughs> the slides over your don't, head. Don't share that, Trish. <laughs> yeah, that's normally what happens. All right, so do you notice right here what this says? This says tongue jack and X chocks. You know why it says this? Why? Because we almost dropped the we almost dropped the trailer in Seattle. Well, don't you need it to take some pressure off it with by putting your stand down? Yeah. Because I tried to detach the truck without putting the tongue jack down. And I did that because I was having so much fun with my pal Kenneth that I wasn't thinking. So that's another quick little tip is that when you're doing this process, if you're new or if you're experienced, it might be something that you do alone. Of course, I like Kenneth's company, so I wouldn't have changed anything. And for those of you saying, hey, Mark, did you do that Hensley video review and install yet? In fact, we've even recorded it. Now I just have to edit the video, so you're in luck, that's coming. See all the stuff we do between seasons? So let's see, we chalked the tires, we disconnected the tow vehicle. Now we're going to level the trailer front and back. And of course, the Level Mate Pro will tell me exactly how much to go up and back, but let's just use our level for this example. So I can just put that there. Of course, it's perfectly level because we're doing this video. But now that we're level front to back, let's go to the next step, which is deploy the stabilizers. So for this, I've got this guy right here because our stabilizer switches are broken, which is why one of the reasons it's going in to get some work done. Come Trish. You have this little tool right here that you can put right here. And the last time I used something like this to bring down the spare tire, I think in the last episode, there were about 452 comments about the fact that I should get an adapter to my cordless drill and go down. I agree, that would be a great solution. I'm crazy and like the workout. So, put this down. Probably need some, probably need some grease, but we're not doing a video on maintenance, so we're not gonna work. This would be a good opportunity to say that I really should have some leveling blocks to put under there. In fact, there are some RV sites in certain parts of the country that are hot and are asphalt and would require 
those little blocks to put those down. But because I left my nice wood block in Alaska and I'm using my leveling blocks for the tongue jack and this is dirt, I'm not gonna worry about it. But that's important to mention. And you can see that somehow I jacked that up somewhere along the path and I don't even know when I did that, but it's broken. Okay, let's see here. We've disconnected the tow vehicle. We've leveled the trailer front and back. We've deployed the stabilizers. Now we're gonna connect to electrical. And when we're done, I wanna talk about those chairs and this pad, because we've made some changes in terms of our chairs and pads. <laughs> so I wanna talk to you about that. And there's that beautiful Anderson block right there. That thing has changed our world. It's really nice. So this 50 amp cord is a little too heavy for me. And I'm strongly considering getting that more ride coil thing on the rig because it's big and bulky. It's not so bad in Arizona, but in Alaska, this was really hard to manage because the cold weather it wasn't this pliable. All right, a couple things to mention with the electrical. One is these surge, these surge protectors right here are essential. And by the way, this is probably a good time to mention that we on our Amazon page created an RV essentials list. So if you're an RV newbie and you're wondering what are the absolute essential things you need, you can go to this link and everything was included in on that page. So RV essentials. One of those things is a surge protector. So this particular park, Cave Creek Regional Park out in Carefree, Arizona, has 50 amp and 30 amp. So I plug it in here like that, turn on the 50 amp, and I've got the proper light readings, so I know I'm good. The other thing you might wanna have is a 30 to 50 or a 30 to 110. It's a good idea to have all your adapters because who knows if you're gonna be hooking up at someone's house and that kind of stuff. So put that in here like that. Uh, I guess I should mention that the reason this is important is you could be at an RV site that has an electrical issue. If you connect your electrical to a panel that has a problem, you could send a surge to your rig and like blow out the circuit boards and have issues with the air conditioners. This is, this is essential. We got somewhere once where there was duct tape holding it together. True story. And then there was another place where I put the duct tape on. <laughs> put that in here like this. RVing in the summer is nice because it's warm in the winter time. This is so painful. This here is the best hose ever and it does not kink. And it's a 50 foot hose. Trish, you're gonna have to walk faster. <laughs> My legs <laughs> are little. Don't trip over the electrical wire. My legs are little, okay? <laughs> <laughs> okay, so don't even waste your time with the 20 foot, the 25 foot hose because you'll need an extension too many times. Just get the 50 foot hose and you can just have one hose. Man, there's a lot I have to share about water. Have I mentioned, this is, this is on our Amazon page. This has been the best thing ever because like that 50 amp cord that you're always like managing and coiling up, I never have to worry about it with this. Okay, the proper way to connect water, and this is important because I see this on Facebook all the time, is I usually have a splitter right here and I've got a pressure regulator on this side and I have a pressure regulator on this side. Then it goes from regulating the pressure to a water filter to the hose. The reason why it's important to have your pressure regulator before the filter is because if, you have, if you're at a park that has really high pressure, you don't want all that pressure, putting pressure on your water filter or your hose. So I see a lot of people, they have their pressure regulator before it goes into the RV. That's putting stress on the filter and the hose before it gets to the RV. So this is the proper way. The other thing I do is once it's connected, and by the way, it's a good idea to always bring some extra O-rings because this is getting a little, this is getting a little worn. Anyway, the other thing I do is once it's on, is I put it on like this, and that way this is going down if I have enough room, and then it goes like this. I think this is a good setup. And then I've got a spare, you know, sometimes I'll just wanna like wash my hands or something like this and connect the different hose and do something else. I've always got this one with the regulator. And I've got an extra one. Watch this, because somebody said in a video once that these things kink, and I have no idea what they're talking about. You see this? Do you see how amazing this is? He really likes his hose, guys. I really like this hose. <laughs> and you notice that it's 50 feet, but it doesn't matter. I, only, I mean, I only need 12 of it, but it just doesn't matter having extra of this stuff. So with the grand design, I've got a little pass through that comes up underneath the rig. And that way I can close this. Connect that up to the, 
the city water like this and then I can make sure we're on city. So city is here, 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 and here. So it's already set up for it. And I'll coil it up like so. Tell me that's not the coolest thing you've ever seen. Nice and tidy. Nice and tidy. Okay, let's go back to our list. We've leveled stabilizers, electrical. It's time to deploy the slides. But the first thing we need to check before we bring the slides out is to make sure nothing's obstructing them. And I'll show you exactly what I'm talking about inside the rig. Change of plans. I'm gonna hold the camera and Trish is gonna record because <laughs> Trish is the one that does all the slide opening. This is my dream because dad spends half an hour saying, Trish, is it level? Yes. So you well, know where to look. I'm the one that's like, are we ready yet? <laughs> uh, okay. This is our first slide, and I always want to poke my head out there and make sure everyone is out of the way and every tree is out of the way and we're good to go. But typically what happens is Mark's crawling under there to put in the X chocks, and I'm like, are you ready? Are you ready? Hand on the trigger. That's are not you true, ready? Trish. We always follow our checklist. <laughs> always. Always. <laughs> Here's a little trick. Before it goes all the way out, I stop and I poke my head in here and I make sure that there's nothing in the way, like maybe one of those cabinet doors have opened and something's dropped out. I have before had a cabinet door open, a camera has fallen out and I've tried to squeeze it with the slide. So hang on. We've been underway before and something has opened like this. And remember the slide is this way. A camera has dropped out, fallen here and fallen on the ground and gotten stuck inside of here. So I kind of give it a once over and just make sure there's nothing that has possibly gone over the counter and gotten stuck back there. Or that one of these isn't open, something oh yeah, like that. Sure. So the same thing is true even more so for this slide when it goes out because these drawers tend to open and you can get one stuck in between the slide and the wall and it will just break it right off. Now there's no coincidence why we've hooked up to electrical before we've operated the slides. If you have low batteries and you're operating your slides, that could be bad for them. That's how slides get off track, is they don't have enough juice to be operated properly. So I try to plug into electrical as much as I can before operating the slides. That's kind of a rule. Now obviously you can't do that at a Walmart if you're dry camping. If that's the case, then try to leave your truck on so that you've got that 20 amps going back to your RV when you're operating the slides. There we go. So that's what you're talking about right there is that, did you hear that bang? Mm -hmm. That's the other thing we're gonna talk to at the dealer. Yes. That little bang. Anyway, so this is what you're talking about right down there, that drawer? That drawer right there, it likes to pop open while we're driving and then this slide will just break it right off. All right, show everybody what you're talking about. This. Yeah, so that's out. If that comes out, and then, then show the slide what tries to come in and it just breaks the door right yes. off. In or fact, we'll crack this. what happened right down there? See that right there? Ooh, yes. So what happened there? I don't know, you tell me. Okay, Trish, what is next on the list? The next thing would be the sewer hose. Ah, okay, let's go. You're probably wondering why I didn't do that when we were doing the electrical and the water. And the reason for that is that I know that everybody in the rig is pretty eager to get the slides out and get everything going. And there's no reason that that needs to be hooked up right away. So the first thing I do is do the electrical and then sometimes I'll do the water uh, if it's needed. And then the sewer I'll do last. That way I can put my gloves on, do the sewer, and then wash my hands and be done with this process. Trish, you coming for this? Now this park does not have sewer. It only has water and electrical, but that doesn't mean I don't have things to say about it. So we're just gonna pretend that it's available. And I keep the sewer hose in this bin right here. And I keep gloves right here. Sidebar, have one of these. I use this tool more than anything to tighten stuff. If the sewer hoses, if the, if the, if the threads on the sewer connector are stuck, this, I use this more than anything. That's why it's very handy right here. Anyhow, uh, these are the gloves that I prefer. I mentioned gloves in Homer, Alaska, and wow, were there a lot of people that like the nitro gloves at Harbor Freight. So there's a recommendation. If you're near Harbor Freight, grab those because they're probably cheap and really great too. If you are not near Harbor Freight and you like Amazon, like I do, then these are the best ones. But don't skip out on gloves because, you know, they would tear and then you'd get exposed. 
I wish we were at a park where we could hook up, I really do. But um, there's a couple things I wanna say. One is, you know those things that keep the sewer hose up off the ground? There are some parks that those are mandatory, so I always carry those with me. Plus, it's just kind of a better angle for the sewer hose. And then, I guess I should put this back on. And then, these um, Rhino hoses right here uh, are what I use. I kind of like that they're, they're stiff. I replace this about every six months because I want it to do this and they lose their elasticity over some time. Um, and then also I use those little uh, clear elbows so that I can actually see what's really going on. So kind of gross, but it works out pretty well. And then Trisha, let me show you this. And then right here is the actual tank where I've got the gray water and the black water. So I'm missing the little lever to the black. It's another thing I'm gonna take care of this week. But one thing I'd like to add is an additional pull right here because what will happen is if you're super full and you're at a place where you can't dump and you drive, there'll be a little bit of nastiness that comes down and sits right here. And when you open that up, it's gonna come out. So it would be better to add an additional lever right here and that way that stays closed you can open it, connect your sewer hose, and then go for the glory. And then my last sewer tip is now that it's connected, theoretically, then I'm gonna open the gray. And I'm gonna leave the gray open and the black closed so that, um, so that well, there's four of us, that's why, because showers and whatnot, I'd be coming out here and emptying this all the time. But the day before we leave, I have a little note where I'm gonna close the gray and I'm gonna let the shower water and doing the dishes, I'm gonna let that fill up the gray tank and that's what I'm gonna to use to flush out the black. So that's kinda of how I handle that. But we're gonna talk about that in a separate tear down and get ready to go video. Where's my list? Have you seen my list? It's inside. Inside. Inside we go. Oh my gosh, I think we're done. So that's the advantage of doing the sewer last is that you can wash your hands and then focus on mats and chairs. So I promised mats and chairs. Let's just get the awning out a little bit. Put that out, turn on some LED lights. Ooh, fancy. Yeah. It's kind of getting dark. There we go. That's what happens when you install your own awning. It doesn't coin. <laughs> okay. <laughs> okay, so we've done a big change of how we feel about these mats. We got this at Lowe's. Trish isn't thrilled with the pattern, but it's kind of a um, it's kind of a woven fabric. And watch this here, Trish. Can you come over there? You're gonna do a magic carpet yeah, trick. Yeah, watch this. Look at this. So what ended up happening is we we used to have this mat that was like huge. And the problem with things that are big when you RV a lot is that you don't want to put them out because they're a pain to take away. So this is really nice because it's just where we need it. It's good for working out, doing squats, and then let me show you this. Come over here, Trish. When we first started, season one, we were in love with our zero gravity chairs. It was so much fun. Over time, those got a little cumbersome too. So we picked these up in Alaska at Omer's, and I love them because I've got this little guy right here. They sell them at Costco from time to time too. They do, and I did find them on Amazon, but they're just, it's just nice. Got a it's little just, table. It's just nice to have like, you put your phone here and a cup of coffee. And after a while, what you'll find is that you want things that are just simple and easy, that store away easy and- Light and tight. Light and tight. Um, is there anything else in there, Trish, that we have? So here's, here's this one. I mean, you see how easy that is? Look at that, love that. Nice. Then we have this table. Very easy table to set up. Really good to accompany a barbecue and Trisha's phone. Always important. <laughs> oh, wow. That's fantastic. That is gonna be amazing tonight with all the clouds. It's gonna turn orange. Oh my gosh, does the GoPro still have battery? Let's change the battery in the GoPro and let's time-lapse that sunset. Okay. That's it. If you're an RV newbie, that is our setup checklist. And if you're interested in downloading that checklist, you can just go to keepyourdaydream.com forward slash setup. And you can rearrange some things. The important right. thing about a checklist is that you do the important things in order. Yeah. Not chalking your tires before you disconnect is a really big mistake. It could be detrimental. It We're can. not fooling around. And so a checklist is important to remember those things. I was online, I was looking at different checklists and there were some checklists that were so extensive that it's like the practical 
application of using a checklist that mm -hmm. was like connecting the cable and antenna TV, it's like that's not a critical item. So right. we just want to make sure that we're doing some of the steps the in order. The check before you chalk and then the hot spots. When you look in where your slides are going, just make sure your eyes go, that's that, that's that, that's that, just to make sure you don't break anything. Smooth is fast and fast is broken <laughs> because we have done it before. We have yes. broken plenty of things and we want you to have the most successful trip possible. There is really nothing more time consuming than being in a hurry. Yeah. And so, and ask us how we know, okay? <laughs> yeah. So it's just a reminder to just take your time and have fun with it because I will tell you that even doing chores and the mm -hmm. setup, if you take your time, is more enjoyable than it feeling is. like you're in a hurry. Yeah. And a lot of times you're in a hurry and then you set up and you're like, mm, what am I gonna do now? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it's part of the fun. But get out there, have some fun, make some memories, and don't be scared because it doesn't matter if someone's watching you, it doesn't matter if you feel the doesn't. pressure, and it really doesn't matter if something goes wrong because you'll fix it in the end. And it's really about getting out there with your friends and your family and the people that are important to you and making some memories. So this is our RV newbie video for setting up. We have some other videos we wanna share with you before season six starts. And if you're new around here, we release a new video every Sunday at seven central. I'm doing the and new dance. And we're going Welcome. to do our six seasons. So if you wanna see what it's like to go to Mexico or around the states or national parks, Canada, Whistler, Alaska, I'm gonna include some playlists uh, and, and there's some playlists down below. Soon we'll have secret season six out. Oh, it's gonna be so amazing. We're very excited. All right, that is it for this video. Hope it was helpful. If you thought so, give it a thumbs up and we will catch you on the next one. See you later.